What's going on guys? Today we are going to get into some live cold calling. What I'm gonna be starting here is 100 days of cold calling. So you guys can actually hear what I'm talking about on Twitter and LinkedIn and my other videos in practice. You'll be able to see the trials and the errors, the pickups, the hangups, the voicemails, all the fun stuff that comes along with cold calling. Let's dive into it, let's book some meetings. So I'm using our platform here, automated revenue. We got a auto dialer filled up. So things, I think I already talked to this guy. Let's see. Hi, you reached Tim with Nanny Riser and account for you. No dice. All right, on the next one. Hello. Hello. Hey, this is Dylan with Automated Revenue. I uh, know I'm catching you here without an appointment. Want to see if I could take 23 seconds to tell you why I called, and then you can let me know if it's uh, fair to keep talking. Sound good? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Awesome. I appreciate that. So like I said, my name is Dylan um, with Automated Revenue. I reach out to CEOs, right, and CROs um, of people in the podcasting space um, that prioritize sales, right? But they're usually running into a couple of challenges. One, they realize that to get more appointments on the calendar, they either need to start or grow a sales team or improve the effectiveness of their current process. Um, they also understand that building an outbound team can be extremely costly um, and the ROI may not be there um, immediately. Or lastly, you guys are, are, are already getting acceptable amount of appointments, but you need to close a higher percentage of those appointments um, and improve the overall closing sales process. So with where you're at right now, is getting more appointments on the calendar or focusing on closing the current appointments more relevant? Probably get more appointments. Get more appointments. I'm, yeah, I'm just ramping this up now. My focus before was selling the advertising space on the podcast. Okay. And that worked out great until I got canceled and they uh, told all my sponsors what a bad person I was. Oh, I'm so, sorry to hear that. What happened, if you don't mind me asking? It was in 2019, some idiots came after one of my co-hosts. I told them they were wrong, and so then they came after me. I mean, that's the short version of it. Okay. Um, yeah, a lot happened in 2019. The version of it was that um, the companies that piled on were companies like Microsoft and Google. Okay. Um, so, anyway, most of it's blown over now, but I realized that I don't need sponsors who are going to run off at the first sign of trouble. Mm -hmm. If I have loyal customers, I'm better off. So I've been trying to sell coaching and stuff. I've been ramping that up lately, but it's it's a little bit of a grind to make sure that I'm out there talking to the right people. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, you're not so much looking for sponsors. Are you really pushing, are you teaching other people to build podcasts, if I'm hearing you right? Yeah, I have two. So I started a second brand. Okay. The first brand is teaching developers to take control of their career by building influence in the community instead of, you know, sl slugging it out for 10 years so they can say that you're a senior developer. Um, but you slug it out for two years, you slug it out on the social media and stuff, and you make it work. Understood. Okay. So I guess what is the main focus, right? So um, I'll get into a second and kind of what we do here. I just want to make sure what I'm telling you is truly relevant for you. And uh, what is like the real offer here you're trying to push? The real offer is to be able to take control of your career and be where you want to be in a year or less. And that's for developers or for podcasting or both? For developers. Okay. I'm, I'm, the other brand is for podcasters and it's effectively the same thing. Okay. Understood. So you're looking to reach out to people who want to kind of get better in their careers from a, you know, software developer standpoint and not, like you said, go through the grind of sticking and being loyal to one company with, they might not be loyal back to you. you well, you don't even have to do that. I mean, most developers change jobs every year and a half, give or take. But when you, if you want the salary and position and recognition that you, most developers talk about wanting, yeah. you have to have stuck it out for at least five years and typically more. Okay. So you're helping them get more pay so with sure. less grind. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Is there any specific developer you're targeting, like, like a Ruby or? Where's that? Um, it's more the experience level. Okay. So, Ruby. 
be developers or JavaScript developers, more along the lines of they kind of fall into two groups. You've got the people who are pretty new, typically have been in the industry for a year or so, and they're looking to, okay, where do I go to from here that's going to help me advance my career? And they have the famous idea who it is they need to go talk to, what kind of company they need to go work at, or how to get the job that they think is going to get them there. Got it. And is the other group is senior developers. They they have grinded it out, but they've kind of reached the top of where they can get just by natural progression and put it in the time. And they know there's something else, something bigger that they want to do, but they don't know what it is. Okay. And they don't know how to find it. And so that's the other piece. That's when they need. Yep. Yeah, that's when they need you. Okay, awesome. So I know what to ask them to figure that out. Yeah, and then I know what they need to do to get there. If you are currently looking to get into sales, making cold calls, becoming an SDR in employment setting, or even trying to become a closer, hit the link below, join the SDR Whisperer. Inside, you'll get a full course, 53 videos on how to cold call, how to cold email, how to use LinkedIn, as well as mindset shifts, as well as scripts that are tried and true and proven. You also get a Slack community, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching on a weekly basis from myself, my business partner and our team. If you're looking to place said individuals, go to WeGeneratesales.com. We'd be able to place a highly trained cold caller and an SDR inside of your company. Thank you. And then is this a one-on-one -on -one coaching or is it like a community cohort based or what is the model? So there are a few different levels. There's the one-on-one -on -one level we meet twice a month for an hour and a half a piece. And we just sit down, we get real clear on what, where you're headed what you've done, where you're going, you know, what you need to do next. And then mm -hmm. you execute over the next two weeks and then we do it again. Awesome. Well, sounds like a great offer, That's Charles. effectively it. And then they get access to all my videos and stuff to teach you how to do it. Okay. And do you usually, so is it a high ticket? That one's 750 bucks a month. I have a $500 one a month. And that one is every week, but it's in a group of 10 or less. And okay. we do the same thing, but we meet for an hour. We usually have one or two people in the hot seat, and then I just handle answering questions and focusing in on where everybody else is at. But a lot of the, the time, your question will get answered, or you'll know what the next step is because I coach somebody else to do it during their hot seat, and so it works out pretty well. I like that, yeah, because you could easily and upsell. Then the lowest, yeah, and then the, the lowest level is right now $39 a month, and I'm going to offer a $75 and a $150 a month offering. I'm going to be running workshops every week with people I know, putting out courses, putting out training videos. Understood. So you're getting so, them in so on the low anyway, ticket. Well, I like it, Charles. I mean, they all work kind of to make a lot of sense, right? Like going from the $150 a month getting a little bit more hands-on with the, you know, the 10 or less kind of community. And yeah. then once you kind of get in there, you're on the hot seat, but you're like, I wish I was in the hot seat every single week. Let me move up to the one-on-one. -on -one. So it's, I like the maturation yeah. of the offer, Charles. Yeah. But I'm assuming, um, given the price points and, you know, um, it's more of a volume play, right? You're getting, you're trying to reach out to the most developers that hit either of those categories, right? Whether they're senior um, or they're about to, you know, they're, they're working their mm -hmm. way up that five-year ladder. Um, you're just trying to right. get in contact with more developers and let them know and educate them on what is available to them for those price points. Um, is that really the biggest bottleneck? Yes and no. Our podcasts reach about 60,000 developers every week. Okay, that's dev so chat. At that point, I'm working on just getting my messaging right so people will schedule a call. That was my and next so question, Charles. It's like I'm working on of the sixty thousand listeners, right? Like, how are you funneling them in, like, to get their contact information and monetizing that audience? So right now, I have a mailing list of about five thousand developers. I'm warming it up right now, and then the other thing I'm doing is I'm launching a new podcast about taking command of your developer career okay, and talking about some of the issues that people have brought to me and then encouraging them to get on a coaching call for a half hour. Okay. Well, I like, I like where you're yeah, coming I, from, I, Charles, I, like I, providing value and actually genuinely trying to help somebody and not get, you know, not take advantage of them from a, from a price perspective. So, I mean, I would love the opportunity to kind of dig a little bit deeper into the weeds with you because what we offer, Charles, to give you like a 30,000 foot view 
is like a services based um, SaaS. So essentially we have a platform which would allow you to do a lot of this outreach as well as like monetizing that mailing list of 5,000, have an opt-in and a form, kind of like mm-hmm. a funnel um, to take that 60,000 and grow that newsletter or whatever the goals are there for the lower ticket, um, as well as we help very much with crafting messaging. So we do copywriting services for email, for text, for LinkedIn, um, depending on kind of where your, you know, your audience really truly lies. Um, And then we actually have the software to be able to send those messages out to those individuals across those multiple channels um, with a lot of less time and effort um, from your end. We also can find new developers. We have like Zoom Info and other data sources where we can search for like a developer that's, you know, in Ruby for five years, right? We can really get granular there and help actually build lists to grow your audience net new and the, new, the newsletter net new. Um, so did you have some time like Friday afternoon? You're in Utah, I saw on LinkedIn? Yeah. Okay, so it's... Yep, I am in Utah. So are you available at like 3 p.m. your time Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern? Friday I am booked solid. Okay. How about next Tuesday, like uh, 1 o'clock your time? That should work. Well, you should have just got that invite to your email for Tuesday the 8th at 1 Mountain, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, I'll have a Zoom invite, everything in there. And uh, we'll get a little bit more into the weeds on that call. So you have a look at the software um, and see if we could uh, help you grow out these endeavors together. All right, sounds good. Awesome. Well, you have a good rest of your day. Thanks for taking my call and uh, we'll talk next week. All right, sounds good. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. All right, guys. So book my first call on the first pickup. So one out of three dials, um, I booked a meeting, which doesn't always happen, right? So I want to set expectations that not every day on the phones is, is going to be that easy um, or that fruitful, right? I've been on the phones. I've made 200 dials and never talked to somebody, right? So I just want to set that expectation. Uh, kind of what attributed to that call is I got him talking a lot, right? So it was a pretty long cold call. I might have said maybe 50, 60 words, right? And he just was an open book. The really big key thing there is just listening. And then at the very end, just kind of wrapping it all up in a bow, tying the knot and getting that person to commit to time. He accepted the calendar invite. I will make a video on kind of how that call goes. I actually haven't made like a true day of cold calls in probably like a year. Obviously, I talk about it every day and that's what I teach. I listen to cold calls all day long, but I haven't actually been the one on the phones, right? I've been running the business. I've been growing at the sales team and essentially training people to make cold calls on my behalf. So I think it's just a good reminder of anyone can do this, right? As long as you put in the reps and put in the practice. And then in the link below, um, we do teach cold calling, right? We have of course, we have a community and two weekly calls where we would actually go through call recordings and give you direct feedback. So let me know if you want to join. It's a small one-time fee um, to be inside the community. I look forward to seeing you there.